Hi and welcome to Bernadette TV, online TV to help you be the best you can be in your business and your life. And we're doing um, a very special episode today. So let me tell you a bit about how this came about. So I've been helping people with their marketing for well over 17 years now. And one of the things that often comes up is people are worried about putting themselves out there because they're frightened about the criticism they might attract. And I hate to tell you this, but it doesn't go away. <laughs> There's a, a saying that the further you climb up the ladder, the more your rear is hanging out. And so a couple of weeks ago, I actually posted something on my Facebook page and it was a video where I think, if I don't mind saying so myself, I was sharing some pretty amazing content on how to be focused and productive. And there was a comment left on my Facebook page and the comment was, why would I take advice from someone who is clearly overweight, must be overeating, and therefore not in control of their life. So um, it wasn't that easy to take that, uh, that feedback, but it is feedback, and let's be honest, you know, I'm, uh, I don't need the scales to let me know that I do need to, to lose some weight. So after I was reflecting on this, I thought, okay, I'm gonna get some help here. And whether you're looking for help in business, health, life, whatever you're looking for help with, it is always important to get help from someone who's been there and done it. You wanna get help from people who have achieved the results that you want to. And so there's someone very special in my life who has achieved these results because here is my sister, Tina Doyle. Hello. <laughs> and um, I think, you know, we'll, we'll put a picture up when okay. we, when we yeah. do this of you, but Tina, over a period of 51 weeks, lost eight stone, one pound, which is in pounds for the American audience. 113 pounds. 113 pounds. And not only did she lose that amount of weight, she's also kept it off for more than a year. So clearly she knows what she's talking about when it comes to this. So even if you think you don't need to listen to me, then, you know, she right here is the expert. And I thought, well, I want to get Tina in to um, give me some advice, mm -hmm. but also anybody else who's interested in this topic. Yeah. And we're not going to specifically talk about um, dieting tips or specific diets, because I think by this stage we all know yeah. if you want to lose weight, you need to... Eat less and move more. <laughs> all right, okay, so it's not, it's not rocket Simple science. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the one question that I really want to talk to you about mm -hmm. is, is not the specifics of how you did it, yeah. But how do you do that? How do you how do you manage on a you know day to day basis to make sure that you are eating yeah. less and exercising well, more? Well, when I started, um, I didn't even realise how much weight I would lose. I know in the past I've dieted and lost a couple of stone. I thought, okay, I feel quite good now, and then kind of given up and put more weight back on, which is I think really typical of a lot of people. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I've got a wedding to go to, I've got an event to go to, and they set themselves that goal, and then they get to that goal, and then they stop and give up, and then the weight goes back on again. Mm. So when I started, I knew I wanted to lose weight. I didn't know how much I wanted to lose. So I just carried on going until my body couldn't lose no more. And that's, and that's, that's purely what I did. I had, obviously, events coming up on the horizon in that, in that time scale. I didn't know it would only take a year. I had no idea. So... I didn't realise that there was a specific process when I started. Mm. I just started, and this is a lifestyle change for me. It's not. It wasn't a diet to lose weight. It was a complete lifestyle change. And I didn't realise that when I was starting that it was going to be a lifestyle change either. So they talk about the journey. A journey to me is you get in a car, you go somewhere, and you end somewhere, and you get out of the car. And this isn't a journey. This mm. is life. This is mm. now my life. And I think that that was... Another process that I went through that when I was getting to the point where I'd lost a lot of weight and I was, you know, my weight loss was slowing up, but I thought, wow, what am I going to do now? Because am I just going to go back to my old way? But I knew I had to, this was, this was it. This, everything was changed for me now. Wow. Well, I think it's really interesting about that is normally um, it, with goal setting, people say yeah. the first thing you've got to have a goal. Yeah. So, you know, often people will set a weight loss target or, a, 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 you know, a size or a, figure on the scales that they want to see yeah. and I think it's fascinating that you didn't have that yeah and it seems to me that your focus has been much more on the process rather than the end result that's right yeah so it was but when I started I didn't realize that I was concentrating more on the process and the <clears throat> issues that I faced during that process as well obviously you know throughout it things are changing very quickly not only your body shape your body size 
but your mindset has changed completely. Mm. And the person I was when I started is definitely not the person I ended up with at the end. Mm. Not that I'm, you know, a different person at all, but I am, you know, a lot more confident in, I was always confident anyway. You, you know, yeah. you know, I never had Runs issues. in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no We're not shy. That, no. <laughs> but I was so much more confident in, it, and in a business term, in business sense as well, that I felt people weren't just looking at me as the size that I was, and I felt vulnerable being that size, mm. that they were looking at me and hearing me m- much more than looking at me and going, okay, she's overweight, she's probably quite undisciplined, and I wasn't at all, I wasn't mm. any of those things. I had a problem I needed to sort out in myself, yeah. and I came to the end of it. I have heard you use language like rock bottom. Mm-hmm. I've also heard you describe um, your, you know, yourself as a food addict. Mm-hmm. Can you say a yeah. bit more about that? And I find it really surprising that people are quite shocked when I talk about it being an addiction because genuinely that's what it was. And I think, well, people who don't understand that clearly have a healthy relationship with food. And, and I genuinely didn't. I remember being in a situation where, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, changing my lifestyle, change, making changes in my lifestyle with, in terms of food, and there were days when I would st- I would struggle. I was literally, you know, almost crawling at myself to because I wanted food. Mm. And you're like a junkie like, looking for yeah, a fix. Like it was, and and that's and that's really what it was. And and I realised that that when I was feeling that way, that that's I was. It's like cold turkey. It mm. really is. And I didn't realise how bad it was for me until I got to that point. And so you're learning all these things as you're going along. And um, yeah, I, I, to get to overcome situations like that, I would busy myself. I, I would, you know, clean, clean in the oven, <laughs> any, anything just to keep your mind off what was going on. And an hour, and an hour would pass by. But literally, I would I, not live by the hour. But I was struggling, and and I think. You realise you're struggling, and I there's a, a saying about um, something along the lines of um, without um, unless you go through a struggle, there's no progress. And I think yeah. you have to go through that whole process to understand where you were to where you've come from. And they talk about focusing on looking ahead and everything, and absolutely you need to look ahead, but you need to look behind at where you've come from yeah. to understand where you where you are and where you're going to as well. Yeah. And, and rock, rock bottom, you know, yeah, there there was days when. I felt it was hard, but I think the rock bottom for me um, personally was when I decided this is that I've got to make that change. When that 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 night, that day, this is tomorrow. I'm starting afresh, and, yeah. I, and th- that's that was my rock bottom. And when those days when I was struggling, that's not your rock bottom. Your rock bottom will have been that day when you decided to make that start. Your, you know, we climb, we fall. That that's life, and we go through life that way. And I think you're, the day when you uh, hit rock bottom again will be the day when you give up. And I just knew I, I wasn't going to give up. This, this, I was going to conquer this. And all right, I've got to get some questions in because you're, okay. you're no, because you're. It's um, I want to ask so many questions okay, about sorry, what you just okay. said, because I first of all I find it so extraordinary when you describe you're almost like clawing at yourself, mm. like in the grip of an addiction. Yeah. And you weren't at the Priory, you weren't in rehab or no. anything like that, but it really does set, I mean, you were basically on your, on yeah, your on own, own, essentially, own. Yeah. overcoming an addiction. Yeah. And so even, ha- you know, as you described, like hour by hour, the yeah. things that you did to make sure you stuck with it. But the question that that begs to me is like, how, how do you find that, that inner strength? Inner stre- strength. Yes. The inner strength for me, I mean, I, I've got a rock at home and he is, he is my life. And he, we were at home together and he probably didn't even realise what I was going through, but just the knowledge of having him there. Yeah. And then I had a fantastic network of, of support and people that I'd met, not even physically met, but just through message boards and who I would have that help through them. And then friends who knew that I was wanting to change my life and who were supporting me as well and who wanted mm. to help me. So uh, that's, that's what I realised. I needed to surround myself with a fantastic network. Absolutely. This had to come from me. Mm. I, I could I could sit and walk up and down the street and say to people, "You're overweight. I can help you." They're going to laugh in my face. Mm. But unless you really, really want to change, you, it has to come from you. The start has to come from within, and then you can make the change yourself. Can you say a bit about reaching that point of getting to that point of really, really, really wanting to make the change? Well, there wasn't one eureka moment. Mm. I think I've talked about this before. There wasn't one thing that happened there was lots of little things that happened one of the last things that happened was i got into a car parking space i squeezed out the car door 
I scratched the car and I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. This is now going to cost me hundreds of pounds to fix my car door just because of the fact that you're overweight. You, you, you need to do something about mm -hmm. it. But there was lots of things that, you know, lots of little situations. Um, but that was probably the last thing. And I thought, no, this, this is it. And I got to the end of the year and I thought, you know, I, I remember driving home every Christmas Eve from work, my last day of work, thinking, you've gone through another year and you're still overweight. And I thought, no, I'm going to change now. Th th I'm going to make a change. And I can't even, I can't even capture that specific moment because I, I talk to other people who are losing weight and I say, tell me, tell me that specific moment that it was because I want to capture that because you've got to anchor that and, yeah. and, and reach back for it. Yeah. When you are feeling difficult and you've, you, but that's the only thing I can say is that when you are struggling, you look back and you think, well, why did you start? And when you have lost you know, one pound, 10 pound, 100 pound, whatever it is you've lost, you know, you still, you've, do, you've come so far, yeah. don't give up. You yeah. just can't give up. So it, it's interesting you were talking about that moment of making mm. the change, but the other thing that you just said about how you kept going, it seems to me there wasn't one moment of making the change. It was the ch that the change really happened in those moments when you wanted to reach for this biscuit tin and yet you stopped yourself from oh, reaching. I stopped myself, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and yeah, it's, I think it's a realisation that you're doing quite a lot of things out of habit without even realising you're doing it. You've got to stop and think about everything you're doing and be uh, so much more mindful about eating and, and what, what you're doing and the habits you're in. And they talk about eating slowly and all those kinds of things, but it's really what you're eating rather and, and, and really stopping yourself reaching for, for something that you know is going to pull you back again, you know, that's going to trigger your addiction again. Mm. You, you said something to me earlier about your hardest day isn't mm. your worst day. Yeah, the, the, your worst day is, you know, when, when, you're feeling, when you're feeling it's hard, and it is hard, you know, there, there was moments where I did think, I just can't do this, I need to throw the towel in. That's, that was my worst day. The, your worst day will be the day you give up. And I realised that. I'd hit my rock bottom when I decided to start. And I struggled, and like I said earlier, without any, um, you know, you have to go through the struggle to get the progress to understand. But you, you know, your worst day will just be the day when you, when you think I can't do this anymore and give up. I love that way of thinking about it, which is no matter, and, and this applies not just to mm. health and weight loss, yeah. but to anything in life. That if you, if if you're having a challenge, that however difficult it is, that it. It, it's never as bad as it's going to be yeah. until you go, all right, I'm giving in. Yeah, isn't there a saying that the prophets say they'll never give you something that you can't physically handle? Yeah. There's, um, and if and if God think, brings you to it, he'll bring you yeah, through it. There's yeah, there's a saying that, and you think that, you know, as bad as it is, it's actually, you're at the end. That point where it's like, I can't do this anymore. Mm. You're, you're at the end of that struggle. Mm. And, and, and everything else is just easy after that. It really is. So... The other thing that I've noticed as we've talked about this privately is that you've you've said that there's no ending. You know, it's not it's not like you got to a certain weight yeah. and you were done. And and I draw parallels in business. Yeah. You know, I remember I had a milestone a few years ago where I wanted to reach a million dollars in business mm -hmm. and I got to that. But it's not like I went, Oh, well I'm done now, you know, I'll go and do something else. Obviously yeah. in business there's always new challenges and new opportunities and new things coming along and you've said that there's no ending to this journey. No, there's not. And it and I know people do talk about um, dieting or losing weight as being a journey and to me a journey as I've said earlier it was like you don't get in the car you go somewhere and then you get out of the car and then you go home that that is that isn't what this is this is a lifestyle change for me to um, you know this is I had to I have had to learn so many new things as well so it's a whole learning process as well so it wasn't like, you know, you start, you finish, you end. It's not a race. It's not a marathon. It's mm. not a sprint. It's not you cross the finish line, whoopie do, have a celebration, and then you kind of go off and do your own thing again. This this is now my life. This is this is it. Right. So one final piece of advice to the person who's watching this, really resonating more with what you're saying, resonating with your story, and they're actually now saying to themselves, right, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to make this change. What's your advice to them? <laughs> What's the killer? What's the killer question? What's the secret of the success? <laughs> well, what would you? Oh. What, what's your advice to them? Like, you know, there's someone watching this right now that's like, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. I'm. I'm. I'm ready. I'm going to do this. I can only. I can only tell you how I. I manage this. 
I wanted it so badly, Bernie. I really, really, and mm. it, that was that was my driver. I, I didn't want to go back to those situations where, you know, on the outside, yeah, I might have looked happy. I was unhappy inside, and I really, I just didn't want to go back to that situation again. I didn't know what the outcome would be for me in all of this. Obviously, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with how, what I've achieved. But you've got to really, really have the desire. It's desire and it's uh, motivation and it's willpower. And, and really, those three things are the key to mm -hmm. it. And you can adopt that in a business sense, I think, mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. in, in yeah. anything you do in life, surely that's desire, motivation and willpower is your key. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. So that was this week's episode of Bernadette TV. And we would love it if you would come and share with us on the blog how this has impacted with you and i'm going to put you on the spot now but if people will come and ask questions on the blog would you be yeah, willing to post yeah. some replies to them so to, yeah Definitely. that'd be fantastic no problem. and um if you want more like this uh, this is the first time i've ever talked about weight loss on bernadette tv normally we're more on business topics but hey it's the best you can be in your business and your life so there is a button right over tina's head hovering like a little crown saying subscribe and if you hit subscribe the good old people at YouTube will make sure that you don't miss a single episode. So thanks so much for being here with us today, giving us the opportunity to share this with you. And we shall see you on the next episode of Bernadette TV. Bye! Sisters, sisters, never were such devoted sisters. Never had a chaperone, no, oh no, sir. I'm here to keep my eye on her caring sharing every little thing that we are wearing when a son a gentleman arrived from rome she wore the dress and i stayed home and lord help the mister who comes between me and my sister and lord help the sister who comes between me and my man <laughs>